Beginner quilt people, welcome back to session number three. Uh, what do you think of my nail polish too? I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Dale, wow, that is uh, kind of super like aggressively masculine. <laughs> and you'd be right. <laughs> but I actually really like this color. It's dark green. Stop talking. Okay. Uh, so today we're actually going to be covering um, strip piecing, right? We're going to be doing a lot of strip piecing. So much strip piecing. It's going to look like a strip. <laughs> But seriously, <laughs> today we're going to be uh, looking at strip piecing. I know that last time I said we're going to be doing pressing. Uh, that's not yet. <laughs> so I lied. <laughs> Stick around. Lots more to come. <laughs> So uh, what is strip piecing, right? For the new beginner, like you've gone to your uh, fabric store, you've bought the fabric, and then we went through how to cut it into our uh, 3.75 inch strips. So all my fabric is here, uh, nicely cut and ready to go. So strip piecing is essentially a way that we expedite the process of uh, sewing blocks together. And whether those are squares or rectangles like we're doing in this case, you'll see why we do that because it does make the process of sewing all the squares together much, much faster. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Um, I'm gonna show you my fabrics that I have all cut here and how we're going to begin actually sewing them. Now, if you don't know how to use your sewing machine, I need you to stop kind of like right here and go and find somebody who can teach you how to use your machine and teach you how to sew with a perfect quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, so let's take a look at what we got going on over here on the table and how we're gonna actually start putting this crazy thing together. <laughs> All right, take a peek here at the fabrics that I have selected for my quilt, right? Lots of greens. It's just gonna be a green quilt. Uh, I think that's gonna be awesome. Thread selection. Okay, we didn't really go over this last time. Uh, I just sent you to the store to buy the fabric and the thread. <laughs> Hope you got the right one. <laughs> But your thread selection is really important because um, what I want you to know is that when in doubt, go a little bit darker. Okay, never go a little bit lighter because when you go a little bit lighter than, you know, your general fabric vibe, your threads will show up more. And at this point, until you kind of gain a little bit more mastery, it's better to hide those things up front here, right? So we're kind of just, you know, hiding our learning curve essentially, right? Okay, so as you can see here, I have a nice selection of greens. So then how am I going to choose which green to use as the thread, right? And so you kind of want to go with a, a mid-tone to slightly darker. You can see that I'm going to be using this thread here, which funny enough, almost matches my nails. <laughs> Yay me. <laughs> I love it. All right, so um, I'm going to go with this green, which kind of across the spectrum is a little bit darker. Um, and so I feel good about that. Now, I'm assuming that we all know the difference between the top thread and the bobbin thread, right? And sometimes there will be a difference um, in thread and thread color that you're going to want from the top to the bottom, depending on how many layers that you're sewing and how you want your work to appear, okay? We will deal with that a little bit later, but just for now, while we're putting the strips together, right, while we're doing our strip piecing, just choose a medium to darker medium um, thread for this process, okay? So I am ready to thread my machine and then I'm gonna actually start sewing this thing. What we're doing up front here is essentially uh, sewing these pieces together, okay? Now, your fabric may have a uh, front and a back, right? Where it's printed on the one side and kind of grayed out or white on the other side, right? So when you're doing that, if you've never sewn before, just make sure that you always, let me see if I have one here that shows this more clearly. Yeah, here we go. So you can see how in this fabric, like it's really cool on this side and on this side, not so much. You can tell it's the back, right? And so we'll take two fabrics that are, right, similar, and we'll put the good sides face to face, right? The good sides there, oh, kissing, honey. It's not only a strip club, it's a kissing club. <laughs> I don't know, I'm picking it up. <laughs> so again, we take our two strips, right? And we just put them face to face, lining up this edge here that's gonna go in the machine. Strip piecing is essentially adding these pieces together, right? So that when they're sewn, 
right? They'll be side by side like this, okay? So that's all we're gonna look at for right now. Um, so I'm gonna put these together and put them through the machine with a quarter inch seam allowance. Also, really paying attention to your tension. Okay, if your tension on your machine is too tight, it can cause a real problem because um, it'll start to uh, really pull, right? So this will get really tight where the, uh, where the seam allowance is, where the thread is, right? So we wanna watch for that. At this point, it's probably a little bit better to have it a little bit looser than a little bit tighter, okay? But try and get it perfect where you can. On your regular domestic machine, it's not as big of a deal um, as it is when you're using a, a mid-arm or a long arm. That's where you can really get off, but just know that tension is a real thing. We're not gonna be dealing with it a lot up front here because hopefully your domestic machine um, kind of takes care of that automatically just put it in the middle all right there you go okay so um i have again my fabrics looking good face to face and then we're gonna sew down this edge with a quarter inch seam allowance okay let's take a whack at that <laughs> that felt very canadian <laughs> let's take a whack at that <laughs> eh? <laughs> All right, and a little newbie tip here for you in case you haven't done this before. I have all this extra old thread from a bobbin, but I need this bobbin in order to put the new green thread on, right? And so in case you haven't seen this, I did a tutorial on it a while ago, just as a fun tip. I use um, either my seam ripper or in this case, my sewing awl. And you just put the awl in the hole of that. Right, put that on top there, and then you can just freely pull that thread off of it rather than doing this other where you're like trying to drop it into your hand and it's like you feel like you're in kindergarten and trying to learn how to tie your shoes. <laughs> it's not very graceful. Uh, so if you use a tool like this and then that way you can just continue to pull it off, it makes it a whole lot easier. Okay, so I'm gonna thread my machine and then we are gonna get started. Now, when you're starting to strip piece, the first thing you're gonna do is just take a little piece of fabric, right? And just test your sewing, right? And just make sure that what you're sewing looks good and normal. If it's too tight, you'll know that right away and that's a tension problem, right? It'll kind of like pull together and gather. Um, so you don't want that. Now, what you're gonna do is take that little piece where you did the test on, right? And you're gonna throw that through the machine first. And then you're gonna pick up your first two pieces, like we talked about, right? Oh, and the way that you pick up the pieces is important too, all right? Let's take a look at that first. So the ultimate goal of what we're trying to do here is, is create as much variety in our strip pieces, right, as possible. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna encourage you, like these are all my, these are all my colors that are going in it, right? And so first of all, I'm gonna pick this one up and pair it with this one. The next one I'm gonna pick up is this one and pair it with this one. And then I'm gonna pick up this one again and pair it with the fourth one. And then pick this one up again and pair it with the fifth one, right? And so you keep going back to this, right? And just adding a different color to the one that you start with, okay? And then once you've gone through and done that once, then you'll start with the next color, right? And add this one. Now you've already done this one and this one, right? On the first one where you pick up the first one, that was the first thing you did, right? So we're gonna just move forward from there and go this one with this one, and then this one with this one, and then this one with that one, and that one, and that one, and that one, and that one right? So that you're getting this color attached to each one of these colors, right? So then you're gonna go through the next process and start with the third one with this, and then the third one with this, and third one with this, and third one with this, so that, again, you're creating as much variety as you possibly can in all of this. If you just picked up these two colors and put them all together, all of them, <laughs> that wouldn't work, like, not at all. So you wanna make sure that when we're looking at it, um, that again, you're getting as much variety as you're picking these up and putting it into the machine in a methodical manner that will give you as much variety of the colors of strips that are next to each other, okay? All right, now we're ready to start sewing. We got our first two strips, which we put the good sides face to face, all right? New people, 
Gotta get used to that. That's just the way we always do things. And so I'm ready to start sewing the quarter inch seam allowance. Prior to getting started, I do want you to look at the ergonomics of what you're doing and how comfortable you are with your machine. All right, like we talked about before, it's a little bit easier when you bring your table up so that you're sewing more at eye level with what you're doing than looking down and kind of all hunched over, right? Another thing, this is for more advanced people. Um, I really like to, oh, and somebody asked me about this table. It's Martinelli. Martinelli, okay, is the name of the company and they produce these uh, hydraulic tables, which are really cool. For the advanced people, we know right about height and everything else but this is a really good way to ergonomically um sew better as well and why is that okay so we know that let me grab this the table right having it higher like this coming up right again i'm not craning my neck it's more the work is kind of just right in front of me and so i'm feeling really comfortable um i have to tilt my head down just a little bit but not a lot now, if I'm doing, by the way, this is just, this is my sewing just for, this is my sewing machine just for strip piecing. It is amazing. It's so fast. Um, but what I also like to do in conjunction with this strip piecing machine is to uh, use this table in a manner where it is actually tilted up like a drafting table, right? So that when I'm looking at, hold on one second. Oh, come on. Here we go. All right, so not only is the table kind of at eye level, but then, now mind you, I have to sit at one of the ends. It doesn't tilt this way, side to side, only long end to long end. Um, so that not only am I looking at it like this, but with the table tilted slightly like this, then I'm really seeing the backside of like your sewing plate, your sewing like small table here. Um, so that you can see your work, not only what's up front here, you know, next to the needle and in front of the needle, but you're seeing what's happening back here in a much more clear manner because the table's like this and I can see back here just as easily as I can see here, right? If it's totally flat, I can see here, but I can't really see what's going on back here, right? And so by doing this with the table, not only am I seeing this, but I'm seeing that what, what's happening at the back behind the needle as well, a lot more easy. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Send me an email. <laughs> so let me grab my fabric again. Ready, start sewing. Oh, and so we're just gonna put this in the machine and get ready to actually start sewing. Okay, everyone ready? Here we go. I am bringing this on home on this one strip. And you can see here that my top strip is actually longer than my bottom strip, okay? So there's two ways that we're gonna address it. The first is which when there's, you know, actually not that much longer than the other one. Let's look at that first and how we're gonna deal with that. So what we're gonna do is bring that all the way into the end of the strip. Okay. And <clears throat> back it up here just a second. Take it out of the machine and snip it, okay? I am going to set this aside, right? And kind of trim this up, but keep this piece, okay? This piece is really important, okay? So when you get to the end here and there's just a little bit left over, you're gonna wanna trim this up and keep it. Now. For real strip piecing, what I would normally do is when I got to the end of this, right, I lift the foot up and parking pads. Parking pads are a little piece of fabric like when you first started this, right? Remember, we tested our sewing on this, right? Looks good. And so then we just continue on with this piece. So these are attached. This is important information that you need to retain, okay? Don't screw this up. So that when you get to the bottom here of this strip, right, I'm going to take another, these are just leftover scraps, right? Just little leftover squares that I cut for another project that were excess. And so I'm gonna start the new strip with another one of these, which is always at the top of the strip. Okay, so I'm gonna put that in there. 
and I'm going to take my next two pieces, which, as discussed, is this one and number three. Okay, and we're going to put these guys face to face, knowing that we are starting this strip with a parking pad. Parking pad goes in first, right? Parking pad, you're just parking that needle right there. It also really helps you with not having to lift the needle up and down. Every time you do something, you just put a parking pad through and just keep sewing. Parking pad through and just keep sewing, right? So that's the that's the strip piecing part of it that really makes it much more efficient. Okay, so let's get going. All right, so let's get through a couple of these strips, all right? I know you can see that this one back here is longer than the one on top. So I'm just going to trim that up a little bit now so that I can keep on trucking, right? So that I can keep going and not have to lift my needle. But like I said, you're going to want to retain this piece, right? That I just cut off over somewhere in a pile. And you'll see why in a minute. Okay, so let's just bring this on home, finish this up. And here we are at the end. I'm just gonna finish that up, put a parking pad through, and then select my next two fabrics, right? So again, this is now the end one with number four. Ah, face to face, and away we go with the next one. So see, I didn't even have to put my needle up and down to move on to the next fabric. The parking pad is through and here we go. Same deal with this one. I'm gonna cut off the excess, put that aside, finish up this strip. Put a parking pad through and then grab my next pieces. See how efficient this is? I mean, you really can get a lot of sewing done very, very, very quickly. Oh, wow, look how long this piece is. Woohoo! <laughs> Hold on! <laughs> it's turning into a wrestling match, my God! <laughs> okay, everyone breathe. And here we go with the next couple of strips. All right. Now, remember when I talked about there's two different ways to deal with uh, the fabrics being different lengths, right? So you can see in this one that this top fabric ends right here and this other one just goes on for days, right? So rather than, you know, cutting this off, another option is to get that through to there, right? Now I just have this long piece and so then I can find some, you know, other random piece, you know, that's maybe not as long or is kind of a scrap. Let's see, I have this one here. Actually, let me do this one. This one's kind of cool. All right, it was just one scrap. I have just this one little strip, but I'm kind of digging the color, so I kind of want to incorporate that. So what I can do now is just essentially take this piece and make sure I put them down face to face and just keep on sewing, right? Like I don't have to end this project here because I can just put this one on top, right? Now, the trick is you wanna make sure that you still have a parking pad in there. Oh, right, so, because the parking pad is always gonna indicate the top of the strip where you first started sewing, and we need to note that, we need that information uh, for the next step, and you'll see why. Don't question me, <laughs> just do it, <laughs> okay? So, I am gonna pull this out just here for a second, lift the needle up, put a parking pad in, and then lift the needle up, go back to here, so that I can always make sure that I have that parking pad indicating the top of the strip. Grab this one, <laughs> now that I was holding it in my hand, I wrinkled it, <laughs> oops. Um, and like I said, just keep on sewing. I'm going along and doing my strips and I realized that uh, I didn't put a parking pad at the top of this one between these two, right? There's no parking pad in there. So I'm just going to uh, tack it to the top of the strip, right, with, with a pin so that later down the line, I'll still be able to identify what the top of this strip is where I first started sewing versus where I am finishing up. We are done with sewing our strips, right, together. 
And so you're going to end up with this. Right? You're like some kind of clown at <laughs> the magic show, <laughs> making <laughs> endless scarves appear, right? Because you're strip piecing, right? You're putting all these strips together, just one after another. So what do we do with them now? Okay, so what we're going to do is you're going to separate these, keeping the parking pad at the top because that's where you started sewing from, right? Each and every time you put it in a parking pad and started sewing. So we're gonna take this and we're going to start putting them into piles uh, as far as how we're gonna use them next. Let's start at the beginning with our various groups and where we're gonna put them in terms of this. But for now, just separate them. And so you have one strip that's been sewn that has two different colors, right? And it has the parking pad at the top, okay? So that's all we're doing for now. Just keep all the parking pads up at the top and all laying the same direction so all the parking pads are on one end. The next step is to start putting these into separate piles, depending on how many blocks they're gonna make, right? So those ends that we had that were just either too short or too long, you know, uh, the one above it or below when we we're sewing, all those ones that we cut. Um, so they're still 3.75 inches wide, right? And so we just have extra pieces left over. Um, and so, remember I told you to put those aside. They're all going in our number one pile. They're gonna create one square. And you'll see why that's important in a bit. All right, we have the rest of them here that have all the parking pads, right, on the same end. So we know that each strip started at this end and finished on the other, okay? That's important to keep track. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through and we're going to cut each one of these in half, right? So just fold it in half, grab a pair of scissors like this, and shablam, right? Now I know that this is the top because the parking pad was there, right? So these essentially go like this, right? Because it was like this, I cut it in half. So this is the top here, this is the top here, and I'm going to put the one with the tag in the four and the one without in the two, still maintaining, right, where the top is on each and every one. And so I'm just gonna keep going through this and um, cutting these in half, putting, oh, I'd say about a third of all of these into the twos and the rest into the fours. We're really gonna be diving into the fours. That's the main you know, building block of what we're doing here. Again, the parking pad there, right? This here. And, but don't do 50-50. The end goal is to get about two thirds here in the fours and about a third of all that we're working on now into here, okay? So two thirds of everything we're working on is gonna become a four. We're gonna have a couple here, right? To make twos out of, and you'll see why that's important in a bit, but just go through and put them into the piles. That's really all we're gonna do today because that's a lot to get all of your um, strip pieces, right? Into the point where they are attached to a neighbor, all right? Attached to a neighbor and then cut in half. And you'll see why that's important in a bit. Parking pad, so it's all facing the same side, all right? But put most of them here. All right, still cut them in half, right? Even if you're putting them all over here to be a four, you still want that, all right? So I'm gonna put all of this strip here, right? It was the one like this. So now I know this goes here and this goes here. So they're all facing the same way and just go ahead and do that. That's where we're gonna stop today, okay? Just get your fabrics and strips organized so that you know what's gonna become a four, what's gonna become a two, and what's gonna be a one. Again, just to reiterate, I know I'm saying it a lot, but it's important that you get it right. <laughs> the ones, right, are your scraps, your leftovers, right? 
and then the twos are going to be about a third of everything else and then the fours is the majority of the work okay that's where we're really going to be focusing here these little bits here are just to fill in right uh as we go along but this is this is what we're the bulk of the work here so that's what we're going to be focusing on so do that <laughs> get your fabrics organized sewn into strips of two and then next time we'll start putting our two fabrics strips here right next to another two fabric strip here to make oh look a four one two three four <laughs> four <laughs> That's what we're going to be doing next time. So anyways, that's it. I'm out of here. Talk to you later. Bye. <laughs>